Welcome back to another bite-sized edition of Look Behind the Look. We are once again transporting back to 1984, which, if you didn't know already, I'm officially deeming the greatest and most influential year in pop culture of all time. I might already have an Instagram account dedicated to all things 1984. You'll have to search for it yourself. From music to fashion to movies, 1984's enduring impact has lasted 40 years. It's generation defining for us Gen Xers. And it's the year that Prince gifted us with Purple Rain. I've been really hesitating on this Purple Rain episode just because Prince is so important to me. Anyone who knows me knows that I am obsessed, have been all my life, and was truly wrecked at the loss of Prince. So I was trepidatious about writing about Purple Rain and telling you guys about some of these tidbits, just because I know all that there is to know about Purple Rain and and any Prince fan really does. But we have to celebrate this 40th anniversary. As a devoted Prince fan, I make it a point to visit Paisley Park every year. Can you say the same? You know where it is? True Prince fans understand that his genius and music had already made an impact well before Purple Rain, but it is what undoubtedly solidified him as the most talented artist of all time. Dare I say, yes I do. The album and the film haven't left the zeitgeist since entering and revolutionizing the world, while Purple Rain simultaneously launched him into the stratosphere of superstardom. It also became his undoing in many ways, so purify yourselves in the waters of Lake Minnetonka and join me as we unpack Prince's masterpiece. Purple Rain is not just a song or a film. It's a tribute to the Minneapolis music scene of the 80s. Prince insisted on shooting the movie in his hometown to showcase the vibrant local music culture. The First Avenue nightclub, featured prominently in the film, was and is an actual venue where Prince and many other musicians performed, and this authenticity added a real touch of Minneapolis flavor to the story. And while the film was ultimately fictional, many of the elements were pulled from Prince's real life experiences. Prince initially called the film Dreams and had a vision for the movie that was closely tied to his own experiences. Dreams was meant to reflect the aspirations of a young artist. However, as the project evolved, the title was changed, and it ultimately transcended the typical boundaries of a rock musical by making the story more personal and powerful in presenting a story of the complexities of the Black experience, generational trauma, toxic masculinity, and misogyny in and out of the music industry, and even exploring queerness alongside the performative nature of gender and sexuality. All challenging themes of trauma managed to intertwine an incredible soundtrack and electrifying, erotic, and over-the-top musical sequences. The film's cultural and monetary success was a game changer. The Purple Rain album spent an incredible 24 consecutive weeks at number one on the Billboard 200 chart, and Prince won both an Oscar and a Grammy for his work. Purple Rain marked the zenith of his career and expanded his global influence. In 2019, the Library of Congress preserved the film and album for being culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant and remain the cornerstone of his legacy. All of the splendor did come at a cost. Years before his death, Prince confessed Purple Rain was my albatross. It'll be hanging around my neck as long as I make music. It pigeonholed me. I nearly had a nervous breakdown on the Purple Rain tour because it was the same every night. I was doing the 75th show, doing the same thing over and over and over, and I just lost it. I said I can't do it. I knew I had to get away from all that. Now, tell me about the wig, you say? You know I love a wig story. And I can't believe that I didn't realize that for many scenes in the film, Prince was actually wearing a bouffant hairpiece. Prince's former art director, Steve Park, published a book featuring intimate, behind-the-scenes photographs that he took of Prince during his time at Paisley Park. And in that book, Park shares when he asked Prince's longtime hairstylist, Earl Jones, about the Purple Rain era. Jones shared that Prince had to reshoot a few scenes after the film wrapped, but he had already cut his hair and bleached it blonde, making a wig necessary to match his signature glorious curly locks. Prince's hair had been totally fried, and he was recovering from the fallout, literally. Jones shared that this lasted beyond the reshoots by adding, the hairstyle in Raspberry Beret was literally all I could do with it. And while we're here talking about Prince's hair, let's not forget the rest of his unforgettable look. Costume designer Marie France aimed to capture Prince's eclectic 
eclectic style, blending rock, funk, and a bit of androgyny. The most memorable of all his costumes was, of course, the purple trench coat with the studded right shoulder and the white ruffled shirt, which became a synonymous symbol of Prince's image. The outfit was collectively designed by Lewis Wells, Vaughn Terry, and Marie France, and now lives at the Minnesota History Center. You can also see a lot of Prince's costumes at Paisley Park, of course. In an interview with Billboard magazine, Lewis Wells shared about working with Prince to design his look. He told me he would call it Purple Rain because purple was the color of royalty, and he thought of himself as a musical majesty, and he was. I chose this fabric because it was attention grabbing and a trench because he loved the drama and the fit. It was a mixture of romanticism and punk encompassing multiple genres just like his music. He wasn't afraid to challenge stereotypes or gender biases. He knew if he wore it, it would be great. In this clip from a 2016 official Academy event, costume designer Marie France shares a little more on the process with Prince and the lasting impact. Well, you know, I knew his music and I knew, you know, like I had seen his uh, music videos from before. So I had a feeling of what I wanted to bring to make uh, his look more iconic, mm -hmm. you know? And what was his reaction when you when you when you did he immediately get it or did? Yeah, I think, you know, because he needs all the videos. He wore those uh, ruffle uh, tuck shirt, you know, but uh, right. like kind of cheap tuck shirt. Right. And I thought, ah, that's so you came up with like the, the cool so version. I wanted to take from that, but make it more romantic, more, you know, you know, more artistic. I mean, in my view, you know. Yes. And I think he caught on right away that I was not trying to change him in any way. I was trying to add on to, you who know. He, who he was. Uh, yeah. Evolving. Yeah, made it. And yeah. didn't she achieve that, you guys? Yeah, she did. The film introduced Prince as an actor, but it introduced the world to Apollonia Cotero, a former lingerie model and musician famously dating David Lee Roth at the time. Before Apollonia, Vanity, the lead singer of Vanity Six and Prince's OG muse and girlfriend was initially cast in the role. But due to them having a creative falling out and ultimately breaking up, he was left searching for a new love interest. At one point, Jennifer Beals was offered the role, but passed. Apollonia was the last tape to be seen by Prince, and she instantly captivated him. In this clip from Owns Where Are They Now, Apollonia looks back on her callback with Prince and the decades of love and friendship they shared. I get back home from the audition, and they said, you have a callback, but they're going to fly you to Minnesota to meet Prince. He picks me up, and uh, we go for a long drive in his purple limo. We had a date that evening. So we just danced up a storm, had a great time, and you know, dropped me off at my uh, hotel room. His bodyguard said, you know, the kid really likes you. And I said, cool, I like him too. Were we romantically involved? Well, back then I used to always say, I don't kiss and tell. We were, and still are, platonically romantically involved. There's a lot of romance. I was not his girlfriend, he was not my boyfriend, but he's my greatest friend. Their undeniable chemistry made for an unforgettable performance. Apollonia inspired an entire generation of admirers and girls dedicated to recreating her perfectly curled, teased hair, lace ensembles, and berry toned hues. Plus, she had me fantasizing about hopping onto someone's motorcycle and looking as effortlessly cool as she did. Thank, thank God I was too young to get anywhere near one, but her coolness hypnotized me. Speaking of Purple Rain, I can't leave without telling you one more story, which most Prince fans absolutely know by heart, but, but others may not. Right after Prince passed away, they opened Paisley Park in October for the first time after um, his death. And I went with my husband, and this story was told to me by someone who worked at Paisley Park and knew uh, this story firsthand, one of the security guards. And it was just the most amazing thing to hear because they told me the story while the video was playing in the background. As the story goes, Prince was warned about the rainstorm that was impending. And as it poured down and poured down and poured down, somebody said, well, Prince, what do you want to do? He turned to them and said, can you make it rain harder? And headed on out to play. So picture that, if you will. Only want to see you, see you. Can I play this guitar? I 
I get chills absolutely every time I watch the Super Bowl performance. Only Prince could summon Mother Nature and make it rain for the perfect live performance, just like the film ended with such grandeur. Let's go all the way back to the start where it all began with that opening scene. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to get through this thing called life. I feel like Prince intended Let's Go Crazy to serve as a revolving celebration and eulogy for his life. And I always go back to this song and the music video as a pick-me-up, whether it's putting on makeup in the mirror, transforming for the day, or rediscovering the wonder in performance and creation. The film opens and ends much like Prince's real life did. It's still hard to believe that Prince will never write another song for us. But his life and vision continue to inspire and are cause for celebration. Purple Rain, in particular, is a time capsule that perfectly represents the era, yet remains timeless. It's ready to be reinterpreted generation after generation. Yes, I could go on forever. I will leave the rest to you guys for now. I'd love to hear your favorite Purple Rain tidbits and stories in the comments. Until next time.